Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about The Torch That Ignites the Stars by Andrew Rowe, the third book in the Arcane Ascension series. So, as usual, we're going to talk non-spoilery thoughts and opinions up front, then move over to spoilers where we can talk in more detail. So, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's begin. So, The Torch That Ignites the Stars is the third book in the Arcane Ascension series, and it continues the story of Corrin Cadence and his group of friends who are basically learning more about the magic in the world of Caldwin and how to progress their attunements in order to get more powerful to deal with all these really high power level people that are like constantly bombarding into them, basically. They keep coming up against people that are vastly stronger than they are. So, the entire name of the game is to get stronger to learn more things and to just get more well equipped so they can basically not get squashed like bugs so this one pretty much picks up right where the last one left off but now they're done with school for a little bit they're on vacation so they're going to use their time in vacation to do a little bit of investigating as well as some more learning and some more you know just trying to advance their abilities as well as try to do some more work to help sarah with her lung issues so she can get her voice back and try to get her strength back up to where it was as well as learning more about the arbiter attunement and sarah's ascended attunement because now she is an invoker and not just a summoner. So the group decides to use their time on vacation to go to Kaleford to Farron Industries so that they can meet Annabelle Farron, who is a really eccentric, really interesting, like, um, owner of this entire company so they know a lot about stuff about attunements and enchanting and artificial attunements and stuff so they're a prime source to learn more about all this stuff that Corrin and the group wants to know more about. So much like the previous book there's not a lot of real like deep plot going on here. The story really is kind of um, a bit of a leisure tale because they are on vacation but for this group their leisure time is not very leisurely so so when they get to Kaleford, they basically immediately split up. Part of the group goes to the Tiger Spire and the other group goes to the company to go meet with Annabelle Farron. So for a good chunk of the book, we don't actually even hang out with Karis or Mara or Patrick. So we're just hanging out with the rest of our group. And for a bit, the story becomes a bit about fetch quests. Corrin has to do some fetch quests in order to get information or to get help and stuff to learn more about his attunements and stuff and learn more about this other stuff. So it's very thin on plot, but it's very leisurely in the way that it is. And for someone who loves magic systems and world building, the story is really, really fun because it's almost exclusively just learning more about the magic and pushing experiments with it and learning stuff and making connections so that you can do different stuff. And it's done in such a way that if you had this bit of information and this bit of information your natural curiosity wonders if these two things can go together and create something else so uh, it's done a lot like that so there's a lot of situations where Corin or Sarah or someone else learns something about magic and then it relates to this other thing so you wonder like oh wow could you like mix those things and do something else and then shortly after Corin brings it up because that's specifically how his mind works like he brings it up like, oh maybe I can put that together and do this and invent this whole other kind of spell and stuff like that so that's stuff is a lot of fun but as i said it's kind of thin on plot so if you're looking for like a decent action sequence or something like that there's one towards the end but it's not even the stakes of it aren't even very high because it's more a part of a fetch quest than it is anything else so the story is very light there's like low stakes and this is just like cementing the idea that this of the three different series is very much the leisure series the small character development series we didn't even get much more with tristan like a lot of the stuff that Corrin is doing in the book has to do with Tristan but we don't even get much progress on that front at all so the like I think the best word I can use for this is leisure so I'm going to go ahead here and conclude the non-spoiler section so I can talk in a little bit more detail about some of the stuff I liked and didn't like and um so let me know in the comments down below 
about any other series that is very heavy on like magic explanation and world building um any other series similar to that let me know about it in the comments down below because i like this a lot and i'm curious to know as to how other people do it like because this is very much character and magic it's a lot of that i wonder how it's done differently for other people because it's my first exposure to something that's not the silmarillion but could damn near be a silmarillion so let's jump over to spoilers so spoilers for the torch that ignites the stars by andrew rowe so one of the coolest things that i really like about the story is this idea of advanced attunement like investigation that corin is getting into he's seeing all the subglyphs and the way everything works and like how to tweak it and all this stuff so my favorite result of that was of course him doing exactly what i would have done because he gets an explanation about the subglyphs and about basically the breakdown structure of the way their attunements work because functionally their attunements are just very 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 high level enchantments so they're just magical runes that have other little magical runes inside the runes and like nested in there all the way deep down so corin learned a spell that allows him to look deeper into the attunement so he can kind of figure out how it works so as a result result of that because he is corn and he is just basically reckless and curious and he did exactly what i would have done and he figured out how the restrictors on the rune work because the runes have basically uh training wheels on them more or less so you have to forcibly like train yourself to build your uh, attunement level and your mana capacity and all that stuff so he basically turns off a restrictor jumps a whole nother level of power and ability and just like gets into this fight and like is kicking ass and stuff and using all his new skills and the stuff he created and stuff using his mana threads and just all kinds of stuff being real smart using that room and everything i thought that was really cool and it just kind of tripped me out like the fact that he can do that like what else does that mean and the fact he learned how to do that that quick like he got the spell and pretty much immediately dug into it and was like oh okay well i can do this like changes one line and change the entire nature of my attunement which is incredibly dangerous i would imagine but he, you know he's the main protagonist too so we don't really have to worry about too much of that i wouldn't think but i like it a lot and that's definitely my favorite part of the story if i was to say i have like any actual problems with the story it's the whole setup of these characters we're getting like we get uh where uh we get constantine and annabelle farron and stuff and like they're really interesting like eccentric characters but they feel very much like one-offs i mean annabelle is kind of emphasize you know imply that she's definitely not a one-off that they're going to come back and like got to deal with that and all that kind of stuff but like i wonder if the other arbiter because he burned off his tomb and stuff is he just going to be like a cautionary tale or like that kind of um red herring option for corn in the future or something because we learn that arbiters have the ability to see the deep deep workings of the attunements and basically turn the attunements into brands and probably remote detonate them so like that ability alone like made it a terrible thing to have because if anyone can copy those parts of the attunement they can recreate it and basically weaponize other people's natural attunements and that's like everybody in the world so it's a huge problem so i wonder if it's just like a red herring idea maybe corn's going to have to burn his attunement off and stuff like that and like you know damn near destroy his mind in order to like get rid of the ability to in order to keep it safe but as what we're basically seeing so far it feels like we're being led to the direction of corn figuring all this stuff out and like being the genius about it and like coordinating all this stuff just making everything better because down to what he was doing in that test he basically made an example of a new type of spire he would create and having the arbiter to me he can talk with the visages which means he can probably influence the way the spire is working or to get better results depending on their ultimate actual motivations for the way they do things which we still don't know but i just like that there's a lot of like like almost not really politicking or anything but just a lot of idea of let's think about it this way let's try it this way like maybe the you know past wasn't right like maybe we can try it different like i just really like all that kind of stuff and there's a huge emphasis on that idea in here and even like the characterization between the characters like here it was very much less it wasn't a lot of because i like the interactions with marissa and um Karis and them a lot and uh patrick too his fanboy nature i like it a lot but like they're off dealing with 
with the tiger spire and stuff so here it was more brother sister dynamic we got a lot of sarah and corin together and i really like their like kind of more or so because corin is starting to get a lot more comfortable with people and recognizing that he has friends and stuff so like they kind of get a little more bickery brother sistery kind of thing going on and i like that like she teased him about how jen is basically a stalker and has been stalking him and then the uh cecily the uh girl from his past that showed up like how he's kind of clearly got a little crush on her but he's got a crush on jen too so she's like teasing him about oh, like, oh who you gonna be with blah blah, blah. so i like that stuff it's kind of fun it's goofy uh, so yeah it's, it's a lot of fun character interaction the magic play is a lot of fun the development of the magic's fun the experimentation with it is a lot of fun but the actual plot itself didn't really get pushed forward much. We really just got them on vacation and doing a couple fetch quests, learning a couple things. Very, very important things, but not entirely earth shattering and it's not jumping the plot forward too much. So at this point, I imagine this is going to be like five, maybe six book series or something because we haven't gotten the main plot pushed forward too much at all. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, I guess that's going to be my opinion on it. I like it. It's very much turning out right now to be a leisure read. The pacing of it is actually quite leisurely as well. It's not, like, very fast. It's not, like, too slow considering, like, the way it's not he um, heavily action pack you could almost fear it falls into like a slower pacing kind of thing but it doesn't it moves at a solid pace for everything that's going on so it doesn't feel rushed but it doesn't feel like too slow or anything so i really like it the characterization is good the writing's good the prose is good so i definitely recommend it for a leisure read but definitely not don't be in the mindset of big epic battles <laughs> so that's my warning for you on this one so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the review there so have you read the um torch that ignites the stars or any of the arcane ascension books let me know about that in the comments down below remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and i will talk to you all next time